so welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, very happy to see you here in that uh, huge volume. In the next, uh, hopefully, half an hour, I'm going to talk about some project management uh, techniques I'm using, mostly about the Kanban method. So from the Lean uh, Kanban, it's a little bit more like Kanban than, uh, than Lean. Now I'm working as a project manager, so as, as a full-time, so not a consultant. So everything you are going to hear from me actually helps me to do my job better. And hopefully I can tell you some, uh, some good hints that will make your job uh, uh, better as well. So uh, I had a, not really a dilemma, more like an objective. So when uh, I started uh, the project I was assigned to, I had the problem of the mura, the unevenness. So what does it mean? It means that in the beginning of the project, it's not really that stressful, frustrating, but the closer you are getting to the end, the more frustrating, the more uneven the whole flow gets. And one of my ideas was that, okay, what if we can turn it around or do something better that it's not really the end, it's very hard, somewhere in the middle. And uh, the more I thought about this, the, the more ideas I get, but eventually I ended up at uh, predictability. So I need the predictability somehow to make it happen. And I guess it was uh, two years ago when I was in the UK. Uh, most probably you don't travel too much in the UK because you are in the UK. But when you go to a hotel and when it's raining outside, that usually happens. So you are watching this uh, stupid uh, cop uh, series you have. So I don't know how many you have there, but uh, every, every time when I'm here, I manage to see another one I haven't seen before. And after that, there was an interview with a police captain, so just to make the mood better. And he was asked that, uh, why are they doing this and that? And he has asked back the reporter that, do you know what the purpose of the police? So do you know what the purpose of the police? Besides giving you tickets on a motorway or... <laughs> or uh, guide the tourists on the Trafalgar Square. Square. Yeah, that's kind of a military approach. But, yeah. but the captain said a different thing. And he said, the goal is to prevent crime and not to fight crime. So most of the time they spend with fighting. But when they have some, some resources to preventing, uh, preventing it, they have much better results. That, uh, better than with fighting. So this is stuck me. It's somehow related to or resonated with my predictability idea. So if the police can predict that there are going to be summer festivals and they set police officers there, so most likely they can prevent some kind of happening there. So they don't need a large or huge police presence in the cities at that time. So what if we can turn it around and use the same uh, philosophy in software development? So I looked around and in order to be predictable, it's good to know about everything. So it's not like uh, I would like to be god of software development, but uh, as a project manager, it's, it's good to know what's, going to, what's happening in the project. So I took an idea from Pavel. Most probably you heard about him, and he started the movement of the portfolio Kanban. So this Kanban uh, looks a bit different than the boards you may have seen uh, during this conference. So anyway, so notice there are no columns for, for different phases, there are no whip limits, so it's a different kind of approach. And uh, when I saw it at the Lunar Logic personally, uh, Pavel explained this more to me as he needs this as a CEO to check uh, resources and availability. So he has a mid-sized company or a small company in the UK scale, but he would like to know when the team C is ready to start something new, and same goes from team B and team E. Okay, uh, does it make sense to you? What has been? Are you familiar with this concept? Sort of. Sort of is a good enough answer. So I took this idea as it is, although I usually tell people don't do that, but uh, why would I listen to myself? And after two months, I realized that uh, this idea is very nice, but it doesn't work. Because my purpose, uh, as you remember, was figuring being more predictable. But Power's uh, need was to do resource allocation. So we had two different needs with the same tactics. So I felt this, but then I started to think, uh, checked uh, some other resources, and then I came across with an idea, a very old idea from, from Chris Mutz and his guys, when they had a very unusual Kanban board where they had 
dates on the columns and just had the work I stand in there. So I took uh, Powell's idea and Christmas's idea and mixed them together and I ended up with this. This is a scheduled portfolio board and how you read this board. So colors help you to see which team is doing what and each team were asked for a prediction, when are you going to be ready with a certain work item? So for example, in this case, Team Yellow said, on week 14, I'm going to be ready with these three items. And how these uh, numbers come into the picture? So each team has its own board. So the data is moved or made visible on the portfolio level. So it's not really much happening on here, what's not happening on here. So here you can imagine the team blue, the team Leo, uh, yellow, team green, all the other teams. So all the data is abrogated up to the portfolio level. Okay, are we good so far? Right. So let's say you are, are playing me in this context. And the question is, if we have week 13, which team needs my attention? So if you look at this board, which team needs my attention? Yellow. Why yellow? <coughs> How about the blue? So this is where we are now. And team blue promised or committed to finish two items on week before today. So this means that if they are forming a stream or anything, somebody else is going to be late. And this information is not something I set to the team. This is what they committed to. And I'm going to talk about it uh, later, but maybe it's similar to a gun chart, but it's not. But this tool helps me on a daily basis to find teams where I can help. So usually how does it work? If you go to an office, look around, these people are working, they don't need help. Those aren't working, they need help. So actually this board helps me to be a bit more uh, better at my job, figuring out who really needs help, all right? And the numbers you can see here, how many items they finished. So when I said team blue is in trouble, how about team red? So they are two weeks behind, and unfortunately you cannot see they have four slash nine. So this means that they plan to do nine items and they just finished four items. So they're not even half, but they started something else in the future. So just by looking at this board, based on the commitments of the team, I can make a pretty good guess where which team needs my attention. Unfortunately, in this setup, almost all of them except yellow. But it's a very helpful thing. And I mentioned the gun charts. So if you remember those, these uh, were MS project in, other, uh, in another terminology. So the difference is that by the project manager did the Gantt charts and did it for resource allocation, who can do what? The schedule portfolio board is based on the data the teams are providing and they are, helping tool to they are a helping tool that helps me to help them. So maybe it's not the best English sentence I ever said, but I guess you got the, got the idea. So without getting in touch with anybody or listening to any gossip in the office, that's a pretty good start for me, okay? Unfortunately, something was missing. And uh, I, to be honest, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to solve that problem. So I cannot really visualize team dependencies. Uh, first, uh, it's really hard in the schedule board. Second, the current tools don't uh, support this. So we are using Linkit. John will talk in two uh, sessions about Linkit. But this lacks this feature. I talked to him uh, now and the only thing I had to do is ask, but I forget this simple thing. But right now, the problem with this uh, whole system, I cannot really see dependencies between teams. But uh, I usually not the giving up type. So what if? We bring back the original portfolio idea and bring it on the next level. So now we have a release board, which was called scope board, big picture board. So this week it has a third name, so you can see it's really an experimental thing. But the point of this, telling that, yeah, let's say we have an Android release, iOS release, release to management, release to somewhere else, or release to customer A, B, C. I can see how that particular release is doing in the view of the schedule. So what you can see here is we are planning a release, 
there are three items were planned that's somewhere on the um, schedule portfolio and two are done. So um, I can also have a guess or uh, an idea how a sort of release look like. So if I have a very slow percentage here, then the release is kind of in a, in a problem. <coughs> and why I did all these boards and stuff? So do you know the joke how to make a difference between an agile practitioner and a Kanban practitioner? Agile practitioners have post-its, Kanban practitioners have boards. So I have boards over there and I plan to have one at home, but my girlfriend said uh, the board or me and I'm still with her, so you can guess. <laughs> But anyway, coming back, so we, it seems we have too many boards, but actually me, or as a project manager, I don't have to write them. So each team has its own board, updates them frequently, this data goes up to the schedule portfolio, and that goes to the releases, and what I'm doing on a daily basis, check, sorry, checking this, does it look good, okay? Does it look good, not okay, then I move to the next step and say, all right, where are the problems? So this is how I'm visualizing projects. Okay, we are good on time. Do you have any questions about the stuff you have seen so far? Please. Um, I might, you might have said this, I might have missed it, but um, who's updating <coughs> the schedule portfolio and the release board or the team update now? Are you so the team updates, it's board. And uh, you can connect boards uh, in uh, almost every, every tool. So when an item reaches the done, it will be increasing this value. So if they are adding a new one, and that will increase the other value. So there, there is only a, nothing actually do. I don't have to do anything with that board. So if you move anything here, either to the next column or to the run column, that number is going to be updated. If that moves there, it's going to be updated. Okay. You don't seem to be satisfied with the answer. <laughs> But, uh, does Linkit do that in the box, does it? Uh, I would say 80%. So Linkit does with the numbers, like uh, 2 out of 2, 4 out of 8. Or manually move those yes, numbers. and it's on purpose, because I would like to know what's happening in the project. So I'm moving things to the done, when I understand what's done. So if they cannot really explain to me what has been done, and I don't understand, either it's a problem with me or what has been finished. So that's just a sanity check. Okay, zero everything down. Done. If we have still open questions, then uh, we do uh, not really a retrospective, what I show later what we are doing. So actually moving to the done on each board, <coughs> it's manual on purpose. But you can do it automatically. How many uh, teams do you have using this? Now we have, so we started with three, that went to seven, now it's five. So it's very scalable. So one problem with the portfolio was that uh, it was really hard to scale. So we started the portfolio with four teams, and in two months we ended up with 10 teams. And it was really hard to scale, but this one is very easy to, uh, to scale. Uh, okay, this board is kind of a big one, but uh, like I pointed out before, I don't really care too much about this part, always looking at, okay, what didn't happen. So what the other speaker, uh, speakers told before, that I'm looking for bottlenecks and see what uh, we can solve. Okay. So the, we, are, we are doing kind of a prediction. So I won't really talk about too much about Monte Carlo simulation and Weibo distributions here. Uh, two reasons, it's still an experimental field. I don't want to bore with you with these, but I'm going to show some simple trick you can use without having a deep statistical or uh, mathematical knowledge. So on the portfolio level, let's imagine that we can create a graph. Okay, you don't have to imagine, it's easy to get. That's a lead time distribution graph. Do you know what this graph represents? Who doesn't know? Who is shy to admit? All right, quickly, here are the dates. So let's say we have uh, about 13 items in the past with a lead time of four days. That's easy. And here you can see how the work in uh, progress or work in process change it for the team. So another exercise for you. Let's say this team goes to you and tells, hey, we, are go we have new 10 new items and we are going to be ready with them in 30 days. Do you believe this team or not? So they said 10 items in 30 days. What's that 
Uh, throughput is, uh, doesn't really matter in this case, but uh, we will talk about throughput later in a different context. But here's a trick. So this is a history of that team, and we have evidence that uh, they did uh, work items in 16, 13, and 12 days. So if you are familiar with uh, the basic Kanban methods, it says draw this chart and pick the item that is around an 85% of the graph. So it's, uh, let's say it's, it's 12, it's easier to code with 12. And why they recommending this, you don't have to do this, it's just recommended. So if you go with an average that's somewhere here, there's a very high chance that you are going to fail because history shows that there were items you finished, uh, you needed more time to finish than, uh, than the average. So this means that it's 12. So if they have 10 items and they have 12 days, so most probably they won't be ready in, in 30 days. And it's not the case that you go there and ask them, okay, why, what did you do wrong? But that's an indication that, okay, we have a team that uh, works with a certain idea of prediction and commitment, but that's not going to uh, work. So that it's a high risk. I'm going to talk about this later. So that team needs your attention or my attention in this case, all right? So just with these simple diagrams, you can uh, figure out where to continue or where to, do more, where to spend most of your time. And if, uh, let's, if you see in this team, they're working on five items, first in history, then very, there's a very high chance that they are going to fail. So you can actually prevent something bad to happen, because if you look at this, they are very good when they have two items in parallel, and they have no history with five. So if they start five, this column should be that high, but that's not the case, okay? So um, yeah. just on that, that <coughs> does that really show that on day two, they've got around 14 items done, or something end on, say, days nine? Huh? This means that they had 14 items yeah. with a lead time of two days. Okay. So let's say it's a period of three months. In these three months, <coughs> you can find uh, uh, 14 items with a lead time of two days. Uh, here, uh, next is an idea that, uh, that's very good for teams. It, it uses the same concept, uh, and this is something I did with uh, the company in 2011. So it's a bit old one, but it's still a good idea. So what we had, we had a Kanban board somewhere here, all right? And we had a, a planning board like this. That's actually a, a screenshot of this board. And how we use this board, we had all the work items we had to work on, and we categorized them into different columns. And uh, we started with 20 work items in the beginning. So we knew that, okay, what we are doing is not really effective. So we cannot really answer the question of our manager or our boss when this item is going to be ready. So what we did, we took the last 20 and divided them into three groups. So I usually got the question about how we divided them into three groups. Uh, there we are not, we were we're still not a scientist, so we just said these three are similar. Or these, uh, that's eight, were similar based on complexity, how hard it was, and based on our feelings. So there is no good method um, uh, based on my knowledge to do this. But anyway, three groups, all right? And we did, for each group, we draw the very same diagram. I introduced you before, and uh, said that, okay, so we said here four, because the, be the good decision were, was to say 12 in this case. But when we looked around, if you think about 12 days, how many weeks are these? More, more than two weeks. And we knew that we managed to finish stuff uh, in, in a week. So something was wrong. And we realized that uh, the data expires. So the more we learn about the product, the more we work together, more learn about each other, so the faster we are going to be. So what we realized that all oh, this data is useless, we throw them out, and we went in the four days. Okay? And we had the same for spend time because we were working on a, a time to market uh, fashion and we needed to know how much time we spend on, on some work items. So we had this knowledge, you can see it here in a, unfortunately you cannot see that too much, but here are the progression of the numbers, here are the sizes, and this is how it worked. I just take this one. So we got something new to work on like this. Okay, we read it up and went to the board and checked, is it similar to this? Yes, or sorry, no. Is it similar to this? Yes. 
So that's an M. So that was the planning. Uh, OK, it seems a bit fast, as, as you can see here, we made mistakes. So what is here, that we had an item, we thought, OK, it's an S. But when we finished it, it turned to be an M. So we use this clear indication that this kind of category is not, it's like nothing wrong with this item, something wrong with us. So we cannot really predict or handle this uh, kind of work item, so let's mark it. And with this team, we were working on a website with, uh, which had a wizard. You know, when you click through and eventually got something. And even the description had the word wizard, it automatically went to M. So even it was changing a color of the button. So if you change a color of the button, if you're familiar with web uh, development, it's not a big deal. But actually on the wizard, it was a big deal. So it automatically gave uh, us an M. And we said, OK, it's going to be out in four days. And we are going to spend nine hours on implementing this. So it was really helpful for, uh, for us to know, OK, this is where we're heading. What's the next step? It was helpful to our managers. OK, we can expect this feature out in four days. Uh, there was a time and we tried to reduce it, but uh, figured it won't really work. But here yeah, we are working on uh, getting on uh, better numbers. OK. I, do you have any questions with this, this method? Do you think it's possible to use it in your environment? You can say no. No. The reason I say no is because how do we yeah. know where the business process is? Yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, oh, OK, a couple of my friends said no, but they are very dear. Uh, then, uh, then it describes me, not them. <laughs> I'm a friend of them, not uh, SRS. OK, so we are going to jump. Uh, forward in the topic. So, so far I was talking about predictions, boards, portfolios, schedule portfolio, etc. Now we're entering a field. Uh, are you familiar with the Monty Python and the Holy Grail story? Do you know the knights who says ni? Nee? Uh, the same goes with the risk. So if you just walk on the street in an office and tell people risk, risk, uh, they are going to be scared without actually knowing what you are talking about. So I was a bit hesitating whether to show this. So in the in the current project, even if you have the smallest problem, it's immediately a risk. Uh, because it's really hard to categorize item. Is it a problem? Is it a risk? Is it an improvement? Blah, blah, blah. Everything has an impact. So if you have something uh, has an impact, that's a risk. And we have uh, a risk board. Like I said, Kanban guys have boards. Do you like them? Not? It started with the cost of uh, delay board that I used with the delivery team. So here is in a, in a better shape. So what you can see here, here we have a done, and we have four distinctive lines, all right? Uh, we have who is working on what and how many limits we have. So it qualifies as a Kanban board. It has all the right attributes. You can believe me. And this is how, how we worked with that team. And mind these nice diagrams in the beginning. Here are they in a big, bit bigger form. So what you can see here is how the time and the impact correlates with the cost of delay for a certain problem. Okay? i give you an example. So let's say I'm running a business now. A web business, there are two guys in, in this session. And the service stops. So it has a high impact because if a service stops, uh, I may be losing money to the customers, etc. I cannot really go there. I have to find the other guy. So this event has a almost an infinite impact on our business, and we cannot really know too much about the cost of delay, which means how much time we are spending on fixing it. So if I decide that, OK, I don't care, or I'd rather have a beer with you and I fix this uh, stuff tomorrow, that's, uh, that's a huge impact. All right, that's the level one. That's an immediate impact. Second is level two, where at this moment, I know the later I react to a problem, the bigger the impact is going to be. Here's another example. Let's say I know that my lead developer is going to be on holiday in three weeks. I know that he's going to be on holiday, so I have three weeks to find somebody who can get some knowledge uh, from this guy for the upcoming period. So the later I react on this problem, the less time I have, and the bigger the impact is on the company. Okay? Is it clear, the level two? And the uh, level three, that now, I know that something is going to happen, but I have a period that I can wait till I do some actions. 
And level four is, uh, this is where improvements, refactoring, and other nice work goes to die. So it has low impact, nobody really uh, does it or care about it. And here you can clearly see the difference. So if you move T1 to T2, that's the extra cost you have to pay. And with the team I showed you before, when we had a daily meeting, we were checking this cost. So we couldn't really make it uh, to the money or to the business, but we could highly figure out the costs. So there were cases when we had two similar issues, and we did this discussion, okay, which uh, has the highest cost of delay, and we started with that one. So this idea is for, for you, if you are stuck with a, with a problem you would like to solve, Maybe you can think about from a different perspective. So what if I'm not reacting? Then what's going to happen? Instead of what's going to happen if I'm reacting now? Maybe you see something, uh, something new. And the levels are moving. So, the le so on the level three, I don't really care about it. And eventually it's going to be level two. And the same goes for level one, level two to level one. So that's very easy. All right, so this is all nice, but uh, if you don't really update the board, it's going to die. That's, uh, I, I, I'm very certain that you have seen uh, boards on, on the wall of your company that hasn't been updated for, for years. Actually, uh, I, I left the company and then the team came back in uh, 11 months and told me that we finally redrew the board you draw. So they needed almost a year. So we had the, and still have this board, and we check it on a daily basis. And what we do, we review all the items on this board, without exception, and see whether they should move to the right, or up, or down. And we care about this one at the end. Okay? So we have a bit different kind of stand-up meeting. And uh, on this meeting, uh, I have my boss and a couple of other uh, tech leads. So it's not a large meeting and how we manage the risks. So we are using a, a fairly new technique from the United States called 4 day X. Have you heard about this? It's a four disciplines of execution. It's a very nice title. But uh, what this uh, says, that you have the whirlwind. So that's the usual daily work what you are doing. But you want to make your life better unless you are a nihilist or something is wrong with you. But it's really hard to find time to do, to, to do this. And this method gives you ideas and practices to do a different, to make a difference in your life and your organizational life. And uh, this uh, image is uh, more descriptive, gives you more information than the previous one. So how does it work? So it works with the big, a VIG is a widely important goal, saying that I would like to do something to make my life better. And here's the trick. It's not a goal to deliver software, because you are working for a software company to deliver software. So it's like telling uh, who, is, uh, who is the favorite soccer football player in, in London. I usually mix them. And I don't want to make a Manchester reference. I don't want to get beaten. Let's go with Lampard, all right? So the goal of Lampard is not to win games. So he joined the team to win games. But he can be better at corner kicks, right? And that's the difference. So if you are using the 4DX to deliver software, you are using it wrong. It's for, for you to find something that you suck at and make it better. And not the, not the way that, okay, we are stuck at software development, let's use it this way. And it's a very important difference because uh, when I'm explaining this technique to people, eight out of 10 got it in a wrong way. So don't uh, make a wig as a company goal. Just find something that's wrong and fix that, all right? And let's uh, move forward with the Lampard example. So if uh, is he still uh, playing for Chelsea? Yeah, okay, so let's say Chelsea wins several games in a row. How much do you know about uh, the progress of him getting better at corner kicks and getting more scores from that one? Apparently not much, because the score, you like it or not, it's the past. It's like a software delivery or delivering a feature. You cannot do anything with it because it has the, it's done. 
right? And it's very important. So if you delivered 10 features and your goal was to deliver 12, you cannot do anything with the 12 because that's going to happen. And that's an important thing. That's a log measure because that builds from the past and show you where you are in the present. And there is a second measure called the lead measure, which will move this whole thing uh, forward that back to Lampard. So if he practices every, every practice 20 minutes corner kicks, that you can control because it's really in the present. You can tell this guy, okay, go and practice or do something. And eventually you can see with the luck how better he is getting with the corner kicks in the game, all right? With the software developers, if you, let, if you have a communication problem with the guys, so how can you measure that they are communicating better? That's a very hard thing. Maybe you can get a Nobel Prize in computer science. I know there is no Nobel Prize in computer science, just for the camera that I'm not that stupid. So you need a lead measure that you can actually control and that, with this gear idea, will control the log measure and your goal, okay? And you, you can combine these two. And here I have an example. So let's say we have a level two risk that the team two is never on time and it risks uh, the, the, the whole delivery in the end of, at the end of the year, all right? Then the goal is to fix this attitude of team two, we are not fixing them getting better at software development, that's why they are at work. We are not fixing something else, but saying that, okay, the goal is to get better with the weekly commitments and with the week you give a date by the third quarter, okay? And here is a log measure. You can see how much item they actually took and how much item they finished, all right? And you cannot really directly influence this one. So they are doing their work, they have ups and downs, and this is the result you can see later. But you can talk to the team and ask them not to start work items that are not connected to the portfolio board, right? Because they, they have a point where they decide, are we going to work on this or this? Is it connected to the portfolio board? Yes. Are we going to work on it? Yes. Is it connected to the board? No, we won't work on it. And what you can see here, that paying attention how much work item they are actually doing that connected to the portfolio and not with, uh, with support, other discussions, meeting conferences, they get better at predicting what's going to happen because they gain back control over their life. So this is show how they, where they are, and this is how they took control. And that's the difference between the lead and the log measure. So it's not with the command and control, there is nothing wrong with, with control. So most of you are, you like to be in control of your life or in control, control of your work. So there is nothing wrong with that one. Problem starts when you try to control others. But here, the team has control. Here's a different example. They got control, nothing happened. This is a good example of having a log measure that's not good, a lead measure that's not good. So regardless what they did here had no effect on overall progress. They, they choose a method that's not helpful. So as a project manager or as a friend of the team or team member, you should realize whether there is no connection between the lead measure and the log measure anymore. It's very important, okay? So summing it up, here are all the boards. So you have the release board, schedule board, team board, and you have the risk board. So what I said before, if you see there is a problem with the team, you do, or we do two things. First, go to the team and talk to the team. Second, put it on a risk board, because just by talking, a problem won't disappear. So that's just recognizing that something is wrong, but we need better execution of the problems. So it goes here. And when it's not a problem anymore, it goes to done. Okay. Dramatic pause. I'm really bad at this thing. So we are kind of over. So that was all I plan to share with you. Here are some references. I will tweet and share the slides so that you can find it later and don't have to make uh, photographs uh, here. And I guess we have about six minutes uh, for questions. So, do you have any questions?
Yes, please. Uh, this portfolio approach uh, of Scanlon, could it be mapped to the um, Scrum of Scrum approach in the Scrum concept? Not necessarily, uh, because the portfolio just uh, maps what you have now. The Scrum of Scrum is a way of uh, you running your, let's say, your business or running your process. So what the portfolio maps the flow, the work items that you actually work. But the Scrum of Scrum is a way you communicate uh, inside your organization. So actually you cannot really do that. But it doesn't mean that you cannot do both at the same time. So actually they are not interchangeable, but you can have this, uh, two of them in parallel. So you can talk about portfolio on a Scrum of Scrum meeting. Do we have any more questions? It seems to me <coughs> that um, when uh, a few slides ago you said yeah. team two never delivers on time, that's yes. one of the examples. Yeah. That seemed to me that they basically took on too much or were just given too much to do yeah. initially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, that's, uh, let's may, uh, let me answer it in a bit different way. So, all the tools or techniques I uh, showed is for figuring out where where you have to put more effort or your, uh, your focus on. So here it's just an example. So team two doesn't exist with the name of team two. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, but, I, know, I know that. But, but, that, but that, that kind of thing happens in yeah. reality. Yeah, so, so. Uh, let's say now we have a team that's working on the backend side, kind of a backend. And they show the similar things, that they are taking too much work, but they don't deliver. So that helps me that, okay, I should focus on that team and see what's going on there. Because the other teams have uh, issues, but that's the biggest issue. Because ima imagine if we imagine a layer structure, if the backend sucks, everything sucks about that. So it's uh, at least a level two issue. So the later we solve it, the, the bigger the problem will be. And uh, thank you for reminding for, uh, me to this. Uh, there is a difference between the problem and the impact. Let's say I don't have uh, 10,000 pounds now. Is it a problem, but it has a small impact. But if I intend to buy a car in two weeks, that's also a problem that has a huge impact because I cannot buy a car. So that's, uh, that's just a question that helps me, maybe will help you, that if you are facing with a problem, ask it in a different way and see uh, the size of the problem and the impact of the problem. All right? So do we have time for more questions? Yes, we do. Yes. We've got two more minutes. Yeah. Nice. Unless you want to meet, uh, see dancing, then ask the question. <laughs> no? All right. Thank you very much. You were great. You were a great audience. I appreciate you for, for coming. And enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.